everyone welcome back to my channel and another tutorial today I am happy to sew along with you the men's architect wallet by purses by Holly I really must say this was the funnest sew I have had in a while it's super fast to cut super fast to sew like seriously I could probably get one done within an hour guaranteed I'm gonna be making a bunch of these for um, my markets this Christmas season um, you can see, let me first give you a tour of this, of course. You can see it's a larger bifold wallet. Um, this size, I've noticed my sons carry this size of wallet. I think it's really good with some of the younger, uh, the younger 20 somethings out there. And when you open it up, it has a flop down section here, which holds an ID or a bus pass or whatever you like. It's got six card slots, a slip pocket here, a slip pocket here, a billfold pocket there. It, I don't know. I just really, really enjoyed making this. Now, you can't do this with cottons. It has to be a non-fraying fabric. What I used in here was a vinyl. Actually, this was a vinyl sheet from Fantastic Custom Fabrics. Perfect vinyl sheet buster right here one sheet did this whole exterior nicely um this yellow is a galaxy customs vinyl one of her canuck line and then my card slots are all done in a waterproof canvas this is a waterproof canvas that i get from fabricville online and besides that there really there's no hardware involved very minimal cutting she does also has svg files that are included with the pattern if you have a cricut machine i have a cricut machine but i honestly was too lazy took my computer to the cricut machine but it didn't take me hardly any time to cut the pieces anyways most of them are rectangular pieces which you can do with a ruler and then there's really only the one that is a shape that you use the pattern piece for to cut four pieces so seriously this is a must. I will definitely be doing um, Holly's other two uh, wallets. She's got the Ladies Architect wallet and the Men's Trifold wallet. I, I'm definitely going to be making these for my craft fair season. Anyways, you can tell I'm just raving about it. Um, yeah, so there are raw edges. I did not edge paint mine, but you definitely could if you wanted to. Um, yeah, I just so loved making this thank you holly for allowing me to make this tutorial and how about we i'll show you my excitement while we get to making this wallet and i'll see you guys on the other side cut pieces needed your wallet exterior two credit card b pieces your id window two of your slip pocket back pieces two of your card slot back pieces, two credit card A pieces, or sorry, four of them, your ID holder piece, your billfold panel, and two binding pieces. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is on our shortest, our smallest binding piece, we're gonna draw a line halfway across at a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape Everywhere I use double-sided tape in this, know that you can most definitely use clips as well, depending what your machine can handle. I'm going to put some double-sided tape on both sides of that line. Take the tape off of the bottom and line the ID window up to that line that we just drew. Stick it down, then remove the tape from the other side, folding that over matching it up using the ID vinyl as a guide to where it'll go and top stitching through there with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That just created binding for the ID window. Next, we're gonna take our ID holder and we are going to draw the lines as per the pattern piece. These are at three eighths of an inch and you can kind of line it up to where the cutouts are, where those corners are, like so. Now we're gonna take some double-sided tape along the top, as well as the sides, right along that line. Use clips if you need to. Okay, 
and then we want to line the ID clear ID pocket up like so so the bottom um, unbound edge is at the top of the ID slot so the ID slot is wrong sides up and our um, ID window is right side up you're going to fold that top edge over top of the ID window like so I'm securing with tape and clips mine just kept wanting to lift up and go ahead and sew across here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance The eighth of an inch seam allowance, I am going, here we go, straight across that top. Now we can work on our sides. What we want to do is fold these sides over as well, attempting in those corners to get a perfect mitered corner see it goes over really nice this is where you got to make sure that your cutting is pristine mine's a little bit off so I'm just gonna do a little snip there once you have it looking good go ahead and secure that with clips and then go ahead and top stitch an eighth of an inch away from both of these sides from the raw edge that we have just folded over the other side as well. That's ID window complete. Now we're going to work on our credit card slot. So you're going to take your credit card slot B. Actually, you're going to do this with your B and A pieces and you're going to measure down a half inch from the top sides some tape along the top of that line and then you're going to fold those top edges into that line so we are folding it in by a quarter of an inch you want to do this on both of the credit card slot B pieces and all four of the credit card slot A pieces this is what it looks like so you folded them to the wrong side of course now we're going to go ahead and top stitch through all of those to hold them in place which I have done now we're going to take our credit card back piece have it right side up from the top edge measure down one inch and take one of your credit card a pieces like so secure with clips on the sides making sure it's nice and straight and then we're going to go ahead and we are going to stitch through just the very bottom part of that credit card a piece and you're going to do that with the other one as well again we're just stitching through the very bottom of those credit card a pieces got both of those done this is what it should look like now we're going to measure down from the fold of that credit card a piece 3 8 of an inch using our ruler for placement grab another credit card a piece line it up with the ruler secure the sides with clips and then we're going to repeat once again stitching through the little bottom section of our credit card a piece on this one as well as on the other one Seriously, super fast. Now we're going to work with our other credit card B um, pieces. Again, three eighths of an inch down from that last one we just attached. Secure it with clips. Now this we're doing a little different because we are going to flip it over to the wrong side and we are going to top stitch uh, or stitch in place on the backing here. So our, our credit card B piece is longer than the rest of it. That is okay. We want to just top stitch through the shorter piece on the wrong side here. Then once that's done, you can go ahead and you can trim off the excess. Those are our credit card panels almost done. Now we just have to base down the size just to hold the credit cards in place, the credit card slots in place. OK, 
Now we're going to take our slip pocket back pieces and you want to lay them up like this. All pieces are right side up. Make sure your credit cards are opening to the top. Take the first one and put it right sides together with the slip pocket back on the right hand side. On the opposite side, do the same thing but line up the left hand raw sides. So these should be opposite one another. And then we're going to go and sew through these clip sides with a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance or 3 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so now we are going to push the seam. You want the seam to be facing towards the side or the, the slip pocket panel and we are going to fold it over wrong sides together like so and that seam we just sewn is going to act as our guide to where the fold is going to be. So make it nice and tight against that. Secure it with clips and do the same with the other one and we're going to go ahead and top stitch through that seam with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. What this has done is it has bound that raw edge. While I'm here, I'm also going to go through the other side of the credit card slot and just where the credit cards were almost over top of our old stitching, go ahead and baste that in place. The card or the, the slip pocket back will be a little bit longer. That is okay. We are going to trim that up here momentarily. So here's that piece that's hanging over. We're just going to trim it up on both of them. Now what we want to do is take our bifold panel now match up the raw edges. Make sure our credit cards are opening upwards. So match up the raw edges of the one with the left hand side raw edges with the left hand side of the bifold panel. Clip all the way around. Go ahead and do the same thing with the other side. So that little bound edge we did should be facing into the center of our bifold panel here. So it's the raw edges on the outside. Once we have this clipped all the way around, we're going to go ahead, take this to the machine and baste this all the way around the exterior. Okay, so that is all done. I can see here I just need to trim off a little bit of excess off of the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and do that so it's nice and even with my bifold panel. And now we are going to bind the top similar to what we did with the ID window binding. So we're going to measure up on our longer binding piece, 3 eighths of an inch, which is our center mark. Draw a line. Go in with your tape or with your clips. Once again, I'm going to do it on each side. I'm going to be using tape and clips. And then we're going to take the top edge of our card piece here. Just trim off any of my little strands. And we are going to line that top edge up with that center line that we drew on the bottom of this binding piece. So we are right sides up currently and our we're putting these wrong sides together. Make sure it's nice and even with this. And then go ahead and take the tape off the other part and fold it over, binding that top edge. To complete this, we're going to go ahead and do two lines of top stitching. You're going to do the first line of top stitching right above the, um, 
the raw edge there and then you're going to get straight across here I was almost gonna say we're gonna do another row of top stitching but we are not gonna do that just yet we got one more step to do here so we're right along that raw edge for top stitching Next, we're going to take our ID window. We're going to measure up an eighth of an inch from the bottom of our ID window. And we are going to put some double sided tape at that eighth inch line. I'm just using my ruler as a guide. I'm going to flip this upside down and from the right hand side, we're going to measure in an eighth of an inch. And we're going to take our ID panel here so it has the back side facing up and we are going to line it up against that one eighth of a mark and the bottom raw edge right along our binding as well and then go ahead and top stitch across the top folded edge of our binding and that will secure our ID window in place. So we will have two lines of top stitching total across the top as well as when we go to finish up the rest it will have two lines of top stitching. So that is done. Now what we want to do is we're going to take our wallet exterior. Once again, we're going to draw the lines. Now I had a little bit of sloppy cutting here. Again, make sure you are cutting this very accurate. Otherwise your miter corners will be uneven. I had a little bit of raw edges showing. So I know for next time to make sure I'm cut really well. <laughs> so it's basically three eighths of an inch in going kind of from the corner to corner. You can use your pattern piece to mark this as well. Now we want to figure out which is going to be the top of our wallet. We're going to put some double sided tape along there. And we're going to fold it in upon that line. So we're folding in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And we're going to go ahead and do two lines of top stitching across this top part, one at an eighth of an inch from the fold, and then again an eighth of an inch from that one. You want to make sure your bobbin thread is looking really good because you will see this on both sides. Maybe not. Yes, you will see it on both sides. All stitching is visible. Except for maybe the credit card slots. Okay, so once we're done those two lines of top stitching, we're going to go ahead and use some double sided tape on the other three sides. Again, use clips if you need to instead of the tape. I'm going to be using both. And then we're going to take our completed card slots here, right side up, so they are wrong sides together here. And we are going to line it up right within those marks that we had drawn on the back and then fold the edges over of those three edges, the two sides first, line up on the line, Fold the sides over and it's going to bind our sides. You're also going to see I put in a little ribbon that has my business logo on it as there's nowhere to put a, a metal tag on this, I don't think. Um, so I pulled out my ribbon logos and just had it inside the seam allowances there. Okay, go ahead and do the other side as well. Once that side's done, you can go ahead and do the bottom piece. This is where you want to make sure your mitered, mitered corners are nice and neat. Again, my cutting was a little sloppy, but I can just go in a few snips to correct that, which you see me doing here. You want it to be nice and pointy there. And then what we're going to do with this is we are going to do two rows of top stitching on those three sides as well. So I'm going to go an eighth of an inch from the folded sides and then an eighth of an inch from that other side or from that stitching the rest of the way.
so that's the first row done and then you're gonna go around those three sides once again an eighth of an inch away from that top stitching to do your second line You know what that's it admire your work make sure your credit card or card fit in all of the slots trim up all your ends and then we're done See what I mean? How fast was that to sew and incredibly satisfying. Um, I love it. I can't wait to make more. Um, definitely going to be selling these on my table. Anyways, if you liked this video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you'd like to support my channel further, you can always buy me a coffee. That is down below in the description, or you can check out my uh, live sew along classes on the membership side if that's something that interests you. Otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!